Hey guys, welcome to the definitive ranking of Spirit Tracks. This is the fourth game in our definitive ranking of Zelda list, yes. and uh, we're going to take a deep dive into Spirit Tracks. Now, I gotta say, this one, what was the last time you played Spirit Tracks? Oh, not long after it came out. Okay. So, I didn't, I didn't pick it up day one or anything. This was, I think I borrowed it from my younger brother. Okay. Because I, I didn't have a DS at first, so. Okay. Um, but, you know, it's been about, you know, what, 10 years or however long it's been. Same year it came out. Did this feel like a totally brand new game to you? Um, Well, actually, there, there was a lot of stuff that I didn't remember at all. But then there were a lot of things that, like, it came back to me. A lot of it was more negative stuff. Okay. Because some of the stuff I didn't like stuck out a little bit more yeah but then there was so much that i was like i don't remember this at all right so yeah it was it was a weird playthrough for sure i believe i said this last episode but i think this is the game that it has been the longest in the zelda series since i've fully revisited like completely mm. yeah so, it might be one of mine too for sure yeah so it was a fun trip down memory lane i think it, it was it was for better or for worse like to revisit certain things because it I don't know it. I had I had kind of just kind of thought about it like yeah, it was a nice little game, and then mm -hmm. this is like, it's it's a real thing again. You know yeah. what I mean? It's not just a memory, right? <laughs> well, let's see the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. Um. So once again, we're going through ten categories that we will be ranking across all of the games, and <laughs> we are starting with the world of Spirit Tracks. Yeah. And oh. we both uh, were in agreement here that it's not a very good world. Yeah. I was trying... It was kind of hard to articulate why, and I, I think m the most of it just comes down to a lot of the time spent navigating across it on the train. I don't really find the train gameplay very much. And mm -hmm. then also, when you're out there doing it visually, the setting, it's kind of bland to mm -hmm. me. So it's kind of a mix of... Uh, other elements that I that I, I will say are okay, but they kind of come together to create something even worse. I think. Okay. Yeah, I'm with you on the actual overworld. It is. I think it's pretty awful. Mm -hmm. Just because of how slow it moves. Okay. How how f like long it takes to get from point A to point B. Yes. M to me, this game, the the bits in between the world that you're traversing, isn't what. It, what I'm looking forward to it's it's I'm I'm very much especially in this playthrough I was like I just want to get to where I'm going <laughs> you yeah know? and that'll that'll show up right throughout this whole thing I actually think some of the characters and mm -hmm. and some of the like this each station I like the the different they're not really different races well we have the Anuki they came back from from Phantom Hourglass yes and we have I, the I like them a lot but uh like the other towns are pretty distinctive. Like the guys at Whittleton are all the like the lumberjacks. Yeah, yeah. And then the guys at Papuchia Village are, uh, well, there's the fishermen. It's they, like an island. It's like a water fishing resort kind of place. Yeah. You, you And you even showed me stuff. You showed me some fun, like, characters and side right. stuff that I didn't really get to in my gameplay. And I, and I just had thought, like... That seems really cool, but it was more... I was just kind of, like, not... To get there and to do all that stuff, I was just kind of like, mm, right. I don't want to do this, so... Yeah, so I think I personally think there are some positives with the world, but the actual overworld is so... It's it's really awful, I yeah. think. It's really bad. It, it, it like it, you, it, You're talking about get just traversing? Yes. Because I, th I think visually I don't really like it either. Okay. I just think a lot of it's just like big empty area. Like mm -hmm. there's like a weird, there'll be like a weird 2D rendered tree over here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it just like looks bad, I think. Yeah, I could, I could get by that. I'm okay with that. I, I, I Part of it I feel like is the limitation, but I don't know. It just, I don't know. When I'm out there, I, I love the idea of a train game where you're mm -hmm. out there and you're like, Look at the big open sky. You know it's beautiful out here, but it right. just didn't. It didn't capture that for me. And one of the more I think frustrating parts about this world 
is in the later port, the very end of the game, when you get to the uh, is it the dark realm, I believe it's called. Yeah. And you get the tears of light, mm-hmm. and then you can you, know, you pull down your horn to uh, the to you know to go faster, and it just zooms across. Right. And it makes me scratch my head, of why was this not some sort of upgrade as you go through the game? Mm-hmm. There's like eight different trains you can customize. Why it wasn't like one of, like yeah? This seems like a clear thing that should have been in the main game. Yeah, there's a lot of train stuff. I think it'll fall more under gameplay that mm-hmm. I have thoughts of, but even right. that area you're, you're talking about, gameplay wise, it felt under under baked. Like mm-hmm. they just threw that in here. But then also that setting of the dark world, I just didn't really like either. It was just like oh, okay, yeah, I don't know. It was just like here's this. One area where there's some train tracks, and that's right. how I felt about a lot of the world. Was it was just like it didn't feel like a real world. Like I just wasn't immersed in anything. Yeah, especially because it had and and this is forgivable because it's a, it's a video game. But they had the four areas and they're very distinct. But it was very much like you went from the snow world to the fire world, and it just <laughs> there was no like it just seemed unreasonable. Yeah, you know? but like what a, I, I'm not really mad about that. There's some of that in like Breath of the Wild too, where y- yeah, you, <laughs> you pa- talked about you this. pause, you look, and it says it's minus seventy degrees, yeah. and then you move over five feet. Now it's thirty two degrees. Right, like, I understand some of that's video gamey, but it it <laughs> I don't know, I don't uh, know. Uh, so we both agree. One, I personally think the worst world. In the Zelda series, that's at least to date for what we have. I yeah, I think so too. That's I don't I don't want to give ones lightly, you know. But right, that's what it came down to. This might be the only one I give. I don't know. So uh, all right, moving on to the art style. This was a little bit tough for me. Yeah, I I agree. We agreed on two. I want to know why though. I so I mentioned like I mentioned like the two D trees and stuff. I just think there's a lot of like graphically. The game mm-hmm. it hasn't held up very well, and you know I understand it's kind of old and it hasn't had a remaster. But I think these two DS games are kind of the the worst looking mm-hmm. of Zelda games, maybe because of the graphics. But um, I feel like it's at least for me, it's not the worst. So I didn't give it a one. <laughs> okay, because I did think at least from a like design perspective there was some cool unique stuff in this compared to like phantom hourglass Mm -hmm. i know we're trying to avoid comparing the games but i just feel like there was some stuff that was an upgrade like i love the style and the vibe of like anything really to do with like locomo stuff so like the train the tower of spirits look cool you know when you like there's some big you know just big settings in this game that just look i don't know they they have a unique and distinct aesthetic that you know if the game if the game had at least had looked better graphically i would i would like stick up for that a little right. bit you know yeah it's like a it's like a 3d ish world yeah but like on a 2d platform it's it's sort of that in between i kind of view this with like early n64 and ps1 games as well mm-hmm. where it's like yeah they're pushing uh a, a style that doesn't fit the hardware a little bit yeah, I, yeah, that's a great comparison, I would say, actually. And uh, it also, this is probably a minor thing, but uh, we both played on the 3DS. It's, so it's a little The bit. resolution is slightly bigger, so it is stretched, so it looks even worse than it yeah. did on the DS, but not, that's a minor I w- thing. I was looking at some other footage of it where it looked a little bit better, too, so it's like, okay, but I still even think, considering that, they're right. still some of the worst looking. Yeah. I, on top of that, I think some of the areas just look kind of bland like even in especially a lot of indoors like in dungeons or you know caves and stuff it it's just like i don't know the the textures and stuff like the 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 areas don't feel distinct like the dungeons for example like they have some elemental stuff in there but otherwise it's like i don't know they don't look very good and Mm -hmm. i always and i it's always weirdly immersion breaking when you're when you see up and mm-hmm. it's just like weird black. Okay. You know, like you're. I don't know. I. I just think. I don't know what you could have done with that. Right. Because you have to be looking down. But it always just looks weird to me. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. There. There are some nice places. I like when you're in the underwater area of the ocean realm when you're uh-huh. going. To, okay. It, it does look a little serene and it, it looks too. at least a little bit more distinct. I would say. The 
But I like the art style, like, from Wind Waker. And this kind of carries yeah. over with these three games. Uh, one thing I was... This is maybe a nitpick, but I don't like that uh, there's very little artwork for this game. Official artwork. Uh-huh. Like, uh, even with... Uh, again, comparing it Phantom Hourglass... Had like had all the bosses had cut. There's like Kragma has this giant artwork mm. where he's like hammering his head. But then there's no other boss artwork. We get, uh, we don't have uh, artwork of all the locomo. Right. And I, I feel like we were missing, like I don't know, I, like they this was this game had so little amount of official art too to complement the game. And that. what it did have, what it did have, I thought was really good though. Yeah. Like I really like the. It's probably gonna be the oh, oh, flute. The flute picture. Uh, It'll probably be the thumbnail, but the one where he's hanging out of the train. Okay. I think it really looks good, and it shows off kind of that that vibe that I like about it, where it's it's kind of Wind Waker-y, mm-hmm. but it's, now it's new. It's new. It's not just like a sequel. Right. You know? So, again, I think it was a little bit more inspired, but that yeah. can only get you so far. Right. Um, all right, moving on to the story. I struggled a lot with this rating. <laughs> Actually, we've lined up so far here. One, two, three. Yeah, we <laughs> so. both put three. Uh, but I, I will say I struggle a lot because this game has, I think, a little bit of a problem of where there's a lot of story in the first twenty minutes of this game. When you, yeah, you get your engineering certificate, then like virtually the whole plot unfolds immediately. Chancellor Cole reveals himself, mm-hmm. and then you, he's got this big, like, bad-looking guy burn. Who's known as Staven, by the way, in the European version. Right. Uh, Burn. He's got this like mechanical hand or whatever. He looks pretty fierce. He's got like red eyes, mm-hmm. and like all this stuff unfolds. And then I think it's a good setup. It it's is. a lot, but I think it's a decent setup. I think it's no. I think it's actually really good. And uh-huh. then you meet Angine. She gives you some backstory okay, with the locomo, yeah. and then nothing mm-hmm. for so long. Nothing. Yeah. Like, you go to the Forest Temple, back to the Tower Spirits, you go to the Snow Temple, back to the Tower Spirits, you go to the Ocean Temple, back to... You kind of play almost the whole game. You you play about 60%, yeah, and then you finally get a cutscene with Angie and, and Burn where they're, like, mm-hmm. fighting, but we it doesn't resolve itself. Mm-hmm. Then you go to the fire and then back to the Tower Spirits. Now we're, like, 85%, maybe 80% through the game Yeah. before there's a big change in the story, and that felt like a giant void. And it was. I agree. I agree. I think it is relying on you to get invested in the middle parts a mm-hmm. little bit more, which that stuff I just never got super into. Right. Um, they could have maybe given there was some stuff with like the locomo, like maybe they could have been a bit more interesting or something, but they really weren't. I don't right. think like, you know, there's one where you have to like go bring one back to the, yeah. you know, they could have done stuff with that and, and, you know, maybe had Cole and Burn be a, you know, a presence you come back to because that's a lot of Zelda games do that. You, right. You introduce them and then you kind of just feel their presence throughout the game. But mm-hmm. I don't know the middle stuff really. Right. I think they could have salvaged it just a little bit if you maybe had like one more interaction, maybe a different type of boss fight with Burn in the okay. middle of the game. Right. Similar to how they do um, Yuga. Mm-hmm. In a link between worlds, where he's he's there, like kind of throughout almost. Yeah, yeah. And, but but it's a different fight every time. Because I liked I liked the end stuff with them too. Oh yeah, but yeah, it, I... it didn't really I I didn't really feel it as much or like connect with the story as much because it did just feel like and now we're doing this, you know. I really love the ending sequence. Mm-hmm. Actually, in fact, I was making my ratings and adjusting it, and I had story as one. Okay. And then I really love the ending, okay. the later yeah. portion. I jumped it up to three because mm-hmm. I I love Burns like story arc as well. Yeah, because he's this fearsome guy. Then he's like fighting with Angie, and then you you fight him, and then you get some backstory about him. He's like friends of the. Is he a locomole? Or is, he like, was, yeah, yeah. And but you get that all in the end. I feel like they could have spread that out a little bit more and told him because it's really it's not really an arc. It's like. Here's the story, and then <laughs> and then whew, like right at the end, if <laughs> right, you know, it'd been nice if it felt more complete. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't need to be like too much. Just you know, yeah. give us a little bit more in there. Yeah, because all, all these characters were great. I thought in in theory and sort of in in practice, like could have helped the world even a little bit more. 
now that I think about it, just because they all had great designs, like you mentioned. They all had great themes musically. So, they're, I don't know. They're some of them, I think, the more likable Zelda characters. Yeah. Uh, another thing I really liked, actually, was, um, and it helped carry the story a little bit, was Link and Zelda. Yeah. They, this is, I think, one of the best pairings of them. They're, yeah. I think the best Zelda, actually. Yeah, the best I'm, Zelda. She's, like, uh, got a lot of... Um, character character yeah, yeah. It, she you know they've got the thing everyone knows like where she's afraid of rats <laughs> i love but, it it's great but she's not also just some like princess who's afraid of you know like she's also very like um encouraging and she's always like yeah high five you know <laughs> like there, she's got some depth to her yeah. in, in a fun way for this pretty simple game you yeah know? i love that they bring the rats like it's one of the early mechanics mm-hmm. that you learn right away when she becomes a phantom yeah. And then it's there and then it comes back in one of the final bosses. Yeah. <laughs> like, like it's kind of silly. Like you're sending like these electric ghoul rat looking I thought it was cool. I, like, <laughs> fight that fight was a little annoying, but I thought it was cool. <laughs> yeah. I will say I do like some of the side character storylines mm-hmm. as well. Uh you kind of mentioned it like there's like the little Goron who's like, I want to go to the big city to see Princess Zelda. Yeah. And then you bring him to the, the city and he, he, he like talks to the first girl he sees. You're the princess. You're more beautiful. Like, you're so beautiful. And then the prince like, uh, I sometimes think I'm a princess. It's like a random NPC. <laughs> and and just the, yeah, this, the specific writing of these lines is written really funny. <laughs> like, like, I don't think we could deliver them as comedically, but I, I do like it where she's like, glad someone's finally recognized, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and he's like, you're a lot different than I thought. <laughs> yeah. And there's kind of like this love triangle with one of the girls at Papuchia village oh. where she like, her husband's been captured and is, is like taken to the pirate fortress. And then uh, he's like, yeah, I want to find a, I need to find a man. I want a guy with a big nose and a musky like, girl, like a beard. Uh-huh. Like, He's like he wants one of the like the the chief from uh, uh, Whittleton. Right. So you bring him over. They fall in love. They 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 love each other. It's great. And then after that, you can save the guy from the pirate fortress, and he comes back to his girl, and he's like, "Who the hell is this guy?" He <laughs> discovers he's been left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, and again to the to the quirkiness of the writing, he leaves. <laughs> I love this where you talk to him and he goes. What comedy gold? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> about his own situation. Yeah. She she left me for him. <laughs> comedy gold. It's That's, literally the line. I think. <laughs> yeah, it's. I loved it. Yeah, I. I wish I could have seen a little bit more of that for sure. Uh, so let's move on to the pacing and and progression. Okay. Yeah. You, so you're saying it's pretty good. I'm I'm sort of with you. I thought it was okay. Like. It, it legit has a formula that it follows the whole game, mm-hmm. which I, I think is, at least it's reliable. You know what I mean? Like, you know what you're getting into. Yeah. And I, I didn't mind it. It's kind of like you go to the Tower of Spirits, you unlock the tracks, you do the thing to get to the sanctuary, you learn the song, you do the dungeon, repeat. Yep. Five times. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was okay. I just, there was times, again, a lot of the middle stuff where it's like, I'm just trying to get to wherever I'm going. I just hate being on this train. Yeah. It, the train, to me, I don't know if that really affects pacing, but to me, it, this was co- sort of like when we talked about the Twilight and Twilight Princess, it bled over into a lot of categories. Yeah. So to me, the pacing is like the idea of just traveling from place to place, especially like after two dungeons when you have to do that whole bridge worker sequence. That, that's one of the worst ones. And this happens a lot where you go, you're starting to go to a new place and you just barely get there and they're like you need to go all the way back here mm-hmm. to then come back here and I'm like ah, <laughs> I just want to go yeah. forward there's so much where it's like I don't know where they it's like immediately like you thought you could go forward but you're not yeah and it just was infuriating a little bit so, so to me the tracks itself hurt the pacing because yeah. it just there was times where I put the, the thing down and just let it sit and then I have the audio on, so if I hear an enemy, then I look back on my screen. Like, <laughs> that's not a good sign for a video game when no. you're doing that. I will say, though, I think the difficulty progression was fantastic. I think the first dungeon, like the first Tower of Spirits yeah. and the Forest Temple were, like, pretty solid intro areas, the learning the mechanics of the Phantom, the Whirlwind. Um, 
maybe of an odd choice of the first item being the whirlwind, but we'll get to that in a moment. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but then the dungeons really ramp up. I feel, and, yeah. In 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 terms of length and in complexity, mm-hmm. and especially obviously the last two tower of spirits are really, uh, I think, elaborate. Yeah, I think the dungeons and the tower of spirits both, yeah. both of them. It kept. Yeah. So yeah. That's that was a solid. So. Middle okay. of the road for me. I can appreciate that. Maybe that if I had considered I didn't consider that as much when I thought about it. But either way I felt like, hey, the game moves <laughs> along at an okay pace. Um I guess maybe for to my two I gave it is sorta of by the end of it I was just like really ready to be done. Okay. <laughs> you know? Uh not, I enjoyed the game the game and playing through again, but by the end of it uh, you know, when I got to the world where I could go fast I was like okay please like right. honk the horn like <laughs> let's get this over with you know the, uh, and one thing we'll talk about this with side content but it, it, it the side content is a little awkwardly paced and that the, yes. main, the main side quests are the force gem quests and there's like 20 of them of which you don't start any of them until you get the passenger car and the freight tr- and that's after you've already been to the ocean realm which yeah. is pretty the late. collectibles are similar to the train but yeah we can it, talk about that yeah it would be nice if there was more of that early on mm-hmm. it was spread out but uh all right moving along we'll t- let's talk about the gameplay and the combat and of course we've already talked about the train a little bit but it's like it's worth it's mentioning. worth mentioning it's, yeah it like i don't really the enemies in the in the world are like it's just tap it's here boring. tap here it's, yeah i like fighting the tanks actually i don't mind fighting them yeah Those guys, that's but, all right but uh, to me, every enemy was just some variation of, like, they're there, you click on them, you know, like, sometimes right. you click on them twice or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I I love the idea of, I like train-based things. I like board games or video games or, that involve trains. I like the idea of, but a lot of them are usually more from, like, uh, the meta perspective of planning the tracks, planning your route. So to me, the, but the idea of like where you, you've got the thing, you're going to plan your route and all this stuff. I, I wish there was something to that. You know, it sounds it sounds appealing, but I, I don't know. I feel like by the time you get all of the train pieces, uh, pieces and stuff you use, like to me, that's like that you should have that early on and they mm. should be expanding upon those mechanics. Yeah. Like throughout the game instead of like. Oh, I'm over halfway through the game, and now I'm transporting mm-hmm. things like items, you know. So I don't know the idea of like taking your passengers and stuff too, and they have like specific needs that could be fun, but I don't know. I just feel like it's not there. So yeah, yeah. The combat for me on the train, I don't like. Yeah, uh, I actually really like the. I I think I'm in the minority among Zelda fans, but I actually I'm, I'm I really like playing with the stylus. I like the controls. I lo- I love that. I would I would agree normally too, but I think the game also starts a, in a deficit with that a little bit too. Well, you hinted at it earlier, but the first item mm-hmm. is the whirlwind, yeah. and I find it very obnoxious to yeah. use. It, this is almost a like like if everything was a five to me. <laughs> the fact that you use the whirlwind and the spirit the sp- flute, yeah, any blowing thing, uh, I get incredibly frustrated with the spirit flute Mm -hmm. did you i want to ask did you have any trouble playing some of the later songs um the i think the last two i think i messed up once okay and then then there was like the there's like the last one you play during a final battle Mm -hmm. and i might have messed that up more than once and i just found it that was just even more for like why are we playing a flute right now <laughs> you know <laughs> it's it, it like brings the game to a screeching halt a yeah. little bit like what is Maladus doing during that battle <laughs> like, hey, come on hurry up play the song <laughs> let's <conducting>. go <laughs> uh but i kept when i was in i think it was it carbon the 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 the, the one in the sand mm-hmm. i missed that one i think three times and it's frustrating because this is what is the difficulty here it's like Real timing is it? Is it picking up my blowing into the microphone? I'm playing on the 3ds XL, so the mic is in this corner. So I'm like, 
looking awkwardly. On top, on top of that, just if you have to go across the whole thing, you have to make it's sure big enough. you start <laughs> in the exact right spot so you can get the full range. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's not very good. So, like, I usually could get it anyway, like, whether it sounded right, exactly <laughs> right, like the game would pick it up, but I still felt like that wasn't good, that also wasn't fun, and didn't feel good. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the Spirit Flute is the worst item in the entire Zelda <laughs> wow. series, followed maybe by the Whirlwind. Yeah, so that's, for me, I could have... Whirlwind's okay, actually. But, mm, I could have gotten over the Spirit Flute thing because it's only, like, these couple times of the game. It, it's terrible, but it's whatever. But the Whirlwind is, like, the first dungeon item you get, and then so much is based around it. Mm -hmm. And, you know combat is based around it and stuff too and I just that is what gets me is that I, I feel like the pacing of the items in general is just weird in this yeah. so um, to me it was a step down from Phantom Hourglass uh, just because that it's it's so much more based around the touch and they right. you know let's make a bunch of puzzles based around these items whereas this it's like what if we get some of the some of the blowing in there? <laughs> right, and, and that leads us right into the the, the items yeah. and abilities here, and you know, uh, I think the the best like some of the some of the items are okay. Mm. I I like using. I mean, the boomerang. This is the, the boomerang is fun. Yeah, and they didn't do as much with the boomerang in 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 this as in in Phantom Argos, but it it. it it's so fun to just trace the spots, and I, I love the boomerang. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. I also like the sand rod. I think that was that's a solid. Yeah, it was okay. Some sometimes I felt like it was kind of finicky. But oh, you have to. You're like, no, move the block to the right, not up, like like that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, but it, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, wasn't great, but I I didn't hate it. Yeah, I think it's 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 always good to put an item like that. Uh, as the last, this is the last item you receive. Yeah, I I had that same thought too. It's like here's kind of this, like the wacky last item. <laughs> right. Well, unlike uh, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, we talked Twilight Princess a few like, like the Dominion Rod, you get mm -hmm. it, or, or or like the spinner because the, these have similar like. Well, views. where it's like the very specific use items. Right. You're not going to use this everywhere, obviously. Right. It but has it's not to a, be sand and a puzzle. <laughs> we're not going to make a sand Zelda game. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Then, like, the whip, was I right? If it, the whip. It's, I, it's okay. Yeah. If That felt like that should have been, like, an early item or something. And then I just really didn't like the swinging with it. Okay. Like especially when you the next thing you're swinging to was slightly off screen. If it's up or low. It just felt kind of tedious to like. Yeah. Where where's it gonna be? You know, it just it wasn't to me. It wasn't fun to yeah. to swing with the whip. There were some spots that are just clear trial and error. Like you are gonna play this and you will fail, but then you'll realize what you have to do and you'll succeed. Like, yeah, you just kind of memorize like okay, it's like just kind of up here, <laughs> you know. And I just never felt good. Like the dismount from from it never felt right. I don't know. Yeah. But other stuff is okay, so I don't know. It didn't totally bring it down for me. Uh, gameplay items, they all blurred together a little bit for me, and the negativity I have about the Spirit Flute and the Whirlwind okay. carried over from gameplay to items, yeah. so I gave both of those a one. Okay, I mean, I could... You've kind of convinced me a little bit. I just thought some of... You know, like we talked about the touch stuff, I thought was okay. Mm -hmm. Um and then I also just thought, like, from a gameplay perspective, the puzzles. Mm -hmm. There's some good puzzles in this. Th there are there are some some pretty good puzzles actually. And I also there's some hard puzzles. I think. I don't know how you felt about controlling the phantoms with Zelda. That it's, was it's kinda... a little, it's a little frustrating sometimes when you want to. Mm -hmm. and, and the AI is not very good in this game. Yeah. Because she, it, it's clearly designed based on your last movements, not necessarily where you are. So mm -hmm. sometimes you're here and Zelda, you're here and Zelda's here. But she's going in the path that you moved, and she's like, I when you try to call her over, and she's not coming directly to you because yeah. she's going some weird, wacky. It's it's uh, it's a little unpolished, which is a little odd for a Zelda game, actually. Yeah, I sometimes wish that I could just be like Zelda attack, like the what are they called, the Geozards or whatever. Okay, yeah. Like where I could just tell her attack this one. Just keep attacking just it. Keep attacking, <laughs> you know. I like the concept of it, and there were some fun puzzles based around it. So yeah. I thought, yeah, it's okay. Right. Yeah, there are, I know, like, t like 
going back to what I said, the, the spirit flu just overwhelmed everything to y- me. Yeah. It, now that I, th- I can't really think of, off the top of my head, really, a game where I think it has be- worse items. So m- maybe I could have seen myself giving it a one, you know. But uh, overall, I had an okay experience playing it. Yeah. Um, so let's let's talk about the dungeons. Yeah. I th- feel right away that the tower, like, they had this formula in the previous game where you revisit the same place over and over. Yeah. And, like, they made that the central focus of this game as well. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like a strange idea because I felt like the Tower of Spirits, it it suffers, I think, from just being bland. Okay. It's, like, there's... It's not thematic. It's not... It's not... uh, It's your... There was not enough. Dis- had, the theme was the the phantom and the stealth nature of it, and each area and introduced a new phantom. Basically, that's where you're doing the Zelda puzzles. Right. I felt that like so. If you count the six iterations of the Tower of Spirits, and then the five dungeons, I don't know if you count those as is that eleven dungeons or is that six dungeons? I think I they did. kind of add up to a dungeon and like a half or something because it's yeah. a little long. Right. But, but where it's building off of. The previous stuff, and you know, at the end you fight a boss even too. So right. it's like a little bit more than a dungeon. Right. I think it kind of counts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I I just wish there was a little bit more. Uh, I don't like. I'm not a big fan of the Tower of Spirits. Mm-hmm. I, I I I do like the thematic dungeons though, and in particular, I think the Fire Temple is a big standout to me. Okay. Uh, I liked going on the carts and shooting the arrows. I, yeah. I, I like that. Uh, it's a, I think that's actually a really good dungeon. I think so too. I mean, so with the th- with the theming, I think like they all they all did have like distinct themes oh, yeah. where you're freezing the ice or whatever. But I think I mentioned before like the design, like things still all kind of like looked the same. It, it's not the worst you've seen it in a Zelda game where it's like, you know, we literally just changed the color, you know. <laughs> but to me, it it didn't wasn't as distinct though. There was some stuff like the mine carts. Mm-hmm. Um, like, like the water temple, uh, the ocean temple, mm-hmm. like it, 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 it felt like, oh, it's underwater, so we're calling it the ocean temple. Yeah. And then let's make it blue because it's the ocean. Yeah. But like it, the actual dungeon is, you're just hooking around with the whip, and you're like, we're, is there? You're not swimming. There's no like. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't. Yeah. Th- there's like abyss instead of water. Like why? <laughs> I couldn't really describe what that necessarily looks like. If yeah. that makes sense. Right. But I mean, I thought, I thought in general they had really fun puzzles. Like I said earlier with the gameplay, so I thought like this is pretty good. I did think like they, some of the later ones had this, so that was good. But I felt like it it kind of lacked complexity necessarily that I really won out of a Zelda dungeon. Did did you feel the fifth and sixth Tower of Spirits? were very complex. I think that's where it finally like hit me where it's like, okay, this is this is pretty good. I think like I it's been so long and I and I was kind of dreading playing the Tower Spirits part 6 a little bit because mm-hmm. I I remember how hard and, and frustrating it was. These are some of the most like thought-provoking Zelda puzzles, I think. Oh, okay, yeah. I, I think in any game. Like There like, were there were some for me where it was like I just didn't know I could do a thing. Okay. So that was kind of annoying. There was some, like, I didn't know you can use the whirlwind to blow the phantom over a gap. And, okay. And you have to get that. I don't even oh, know if that's part yeah. of the main, if Is you had to do that in a main thing, but there's some treasure chests that you can only reach doing that. Oh. If you revisit the first two tower spirits in particular. But I, I also didn't know if, like, maybe I just missed where it described it to me, but, like, I, and, you know, some of it is, like, you should just play a lot around with stuff. But I think there were some things that it's, like, I you expected me to know this that's weird but it, that wasn't egregious you know but I I did think like I don't know it got really complex later on but most of the rest of it 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 got it definitely got more complex but it never was too bad it it was right. usually like you go to a you go to your room on your floor there's one way you can't go there's another way you got to go then you come back around right. and you go to this way and even in kind of how difficult um, the last Tower of Spirit w- was, like, the biggest thing I was doing was just going back and forth right. between two locations, and it was just kind of tedious. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was it was okay, though. It was still pretty fun, but I don't know. It didn't, like, it, it was, like, 
this is more of an endurance challenge than anything. There was a little bit of that. There were sometimes I'd get to a room in the Tower Spirits 5 and 6. I'm like, oh, I can't do this. Wait, can I do this yet? Oh, there's, like, I got to jump on top of the Phantom, and he's got to, mm-hmm. ki- how do I get, oh, but if I walk over the sand, the Phantom's going to sink in the sand. Mm-hmm. Oh, but if he's on a higher ledge and I use yeah. the sand, so it was like layers, and I felt good when I solved there, some of these puzzles. There was some really good stuff with that, for sure. Yeah. Some of the best puzzles. I Like, I, I think this might, them, I think without a doubt, those are the two biggest puzzle-based dungeons in the whole mm-hmm. series as well. Like. And I think that goes, I think that's something I thought of when we were playing Wind Waker even was they have, that game has really fun puzzles and uh, so they kind of give you uh, linear kind of dungeons to progress through because they kind of build your puzzle knowledge based off of it. Yeah. So you're kind of playing through a set series of puzzles where you kind of need the knowledge of the last one. Yeah. So I kind of forgive it, but you know, it made for some of the point of a dungeon being a dungeon. It's kind of like, you know, I just like that classic style more. Yeah. Oh, and you know what? I want, I also want to say about the tower of spirits, like the idea of going back and replaying it. It's hard. It's hard not to think of the ocean King, but the, the, the idea of going back to it was that things are different now. Mm -hmm. And so you can affect it differently, Mm -hmm. but here it's, there's no point to going back. No, it could have been a different location. Well, I mean, I guess thematically it was kind of cool assembling it, and I liked when you're going up and the music is building. So it was okay in that sense, and I didn't think it was bad, but I just thought, like, it's just why why did they specifically need to do that again? I don't know. I think they like w- they had a formula, and they wanted to follow it to the T, like, and it was, like, awkward because it was not necessary, I think. I feel like they were now they were trying to correct what some people didn't like about Ocean King, but, yeah. but in that way they it was like... Just why did they even do it? Like, this? just do something a little different. Yeah, yeah. But whatever. Uh, so let's talk about the enemies and bosses. So uh, there was, there's a lot of carryover from Phantom yeah. Argos. Some of the, some of the enemies are identical, actually. Like some like uh, um, the Geozards, or they were called Zora Warriors before. Although they play differently because now you have the Phantom and mm-hmm. whatnot. Um, but some of the bosses are. I think they had some unique bosses. Yeah. I, 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 I like the bosses in there. And, the, and they do the thing that they do in these games where they have the two screens. They're, so they're these big titans, you know? Yeah. In fact, I think almost yeah, every single boss used the dual screen at some point. Yeah. So that that's always a cool, unique feature to these games. Yeah. Did you have, do you have a favorite of the bosses? Um, yeah, I have a least favorite, actually. Ooh. Um that I just want to throw out there is the one where you're riding the cart around and shooting arrows. Because yeah. sometimes it's a waiting game. Mm-hmm. One time I ran out of arrows. I, and I, I just too. had to wait for it to cycle around. I thought the concept was cool, but... The visuals are cool, but... Uh, yeah. I just would, like, just give me the arrows <laughs> or something. Like, normally, I'd, you know, like, I don't know. I just kind of, that was annoying. But yeah. I don't know if I had a favorite. Okay. Uh, other than that, I kind of liked all of them pretty much the same yeah i i do have uh we'll get to this with side content but there's also like the take them all on challenge oh yeah yeah and it was weird to me like i fought uh stagnox the boss in the forest temple mm-hmm. four times in this game okay if you're gonna 100 percent the game you have to beat him four times which seems a little excessive i think it was cool to see him in the in that but like and then i fought uh the second dungeon uh Fraz. I fought him three times. Fraz is good. Five tops. I fought him three times. You know, so. Stagnox, I will say at least, like, I didn't hate. Uh, I enjoyed Stagnox, and even though it was a whirlwind boss. So, yeah. G- give it up for that. Yeah. Um, uh, You know what? I thought of my favorite was when you, the whip. I, I'm bad with the names of these bosses. But five tops. Five tops, where you whip the stuff. You throw the needles at its eyes. It was just satisfying. It actually felt good. I'm like, okay, this makes good kind of fun use of the whip mm-hmm. so yeah i was okay i was pretty into that one i i also enjoyed uh skeldrich the boss of the um sand temple oh that's like the layers he's he's like you gotta knock off his yeah actually his that's, body parts that's and it was, even better i would say it was a, kind of like a puzzle in of itself where it's like oh he's got armor here i gotta hit him on the back so you or like, the side yeah that was pretty fun 
That yeah. was pretty fun. It, it gave a good Zelda feeling like, ooh, I knocked the first two off, and I didn't realize it was having armor. Mm. And then the third, I'm like, wait, this didn't work. Wait, it didn't work. Oh, he's got arm. Oh, he's vulnerable. So it, it got me thinking, like, yeah, it's made you're meant to fail before you succeed, and that's always a good sign. I they think. do kind of when the, he falls, they kind of telegraph it a little in the cutscene, but yeah, yeah. What about um, Burn and then the final boss? Um, Burn was confusing on mm-hmm. what to do. I didn't remember how to beat him at first. There was one phase where I was confused. I can't actually remember which one. It was actually kind of tough, mm-hmm. but that I think came down a little bit more to the controlling Zelda as well. Okay, that was kind of sometimes finicky, but I thought it was cool. It was just kind of a cool setting and yeah, fight and stuff. So I enjoyed it. Yeah, that was good. I liked uh, I, I I liked the Demon Train battle too as well. That was pretty good. Yeah, I actually felt like. When I was doing that, I was like, okay, this is kind of the kind of, like, maybe they should have had more of that in the game, Mm. in in the overworld where you're going places. Like, maybe if you fought more interesting bosses where the gameplay changed. Yeah, there was only the one boss battle on the train, which was, like, the Rock Tights, the overworld boss, where you go through a cave and it's like a, there's the little tech tights, but there's the giant That was pretty good. Um, You just encountered him the one time? I think the one time, yeah. Uh, or no, there's there's one other time you encounter them, I believe, too. On your way to the Sand Temple, yeah. I think, yeah. yeah. And then there's more of them if you do some of the mm-hmm. side quests. But it's like it seems odd that this boss was – there should have been more in the terms of I feel of like that should have been boss. what you were doing other than, like, running around, like, looking for a carpenter or something, you know? Yeah. I, I also liked there was, like, a fight on the train. Like, oh. Yeah, that was kind of fun. The Big Blin? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That was pretty good. So mm-hmm. I'll give it to that. Yeah. And the the final boss though, did you have any? You know, I um I used to think he was a lot tougher than he really was. Okay, Maladus and uh, um, the 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 Zelda Maladus battle. Yeah, it was, a, it was a little okay. frustrating a little bit because he, uh, I didn't really have a hard time with it. So okay, it was just kind of like get on the other side and just like tap. He never even really hurt me. Oh, I was referring like the puppet Zelda Maladus. Oh, like, that that was a little frustrating. Yeah. When I kept getting, I kept he kept the 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 rats kept getting to. There were times where I felt like the failing I was experiencing in that was beyond my control. Okay, a little bit where the rats were coming like, too fast or something, or like it was off screen, so I couldn't. I don't know. I I just remember being like, this is frustrating, but. I didn't mess up, and I got to the end, so yeah. I was like, whatever, I beat it. You know? I started questioning my ability. I'm like, am I supposed to be allowed to stun Chancellor Cole so I can make progress? Yeah. I wasn't sure. Then I was throwing the boomerang, and he would just disappear and move. And Yeah. I felt, yeah, but it was okay. The, it was the final boss that was like pretty easy, I thought, and then you yeah. had to play the flute during it, so it's kind of... Yeah, I, yeah, a little frustrating when, when he shoots the four balls at you. At the same thing, you got to do a well time spin attack. I also just thought, like, why why was this his design in the end? Mm. It was just like Dark Beast Ganon again with a with a yeah with Chancellor Cole's horns and mustache. You know. Yeah, because he took the body of Chancellor Cole. It's like a weird trend in Zelda games, like even with yeah, Yuga, and it's like let's make him Ganon. <laughs> like even enemies who aren't Ganon, they're like <laughs> we got to make him Ganon somehow. Yeah. Um, and uh, th- this will transfer over to the next the side content, but there's one other boss. I don't think you saw him. Oh. But it's an that... optional boss. You get to fight Dark Link in this game. Oh, yeah, I did not do that. He is the, the final boss of the um, of the Take Em On All Challenge Part 3. Okay. And um, what I like, I love this boss skull, and this goes into my side content, which I gave it a four. And I, um, mm-hmm. this is another one I had a lot of, I struggled with. Because okay. there's a lot to hate, I think, about the side content here. Yeah. We talked about these Force Gems quests. You're just literally bringing wood to this place. You're bringing Mega Ice to this place. Yeah. You're bringing Dark I think ore. that could be cool, though. I just I don't think they fully got there. I don't know what it is. It's like you're bringing people over and, oh, like the train goes so slow, but you have to stop and go even slower in some points because they yeah. start yelling at you if you go at full, like, mm-hmm. uh, you, know, you didn't blow the whistle at the right time. It's like... The, that the transporting of materials and people was not fun to me. Yeah, and that's like the beginning of most of the quests. 
On top of that, there was the rabbits. Did you end up getting? I didn't catch a single rabbit. Okay. Actually, I, I just want to say my little because I I you're gonna be more of the bonus guy here, but I get it was more of a courtesy three because I I looked and I saw like okay, there's all this potentially cool stuff you could do, but again, I was hampered by like I like oh is this the this uh, stop up here? What could be there? I don't know because I'm just trying to. I don't want to have to stop the train, do a cut scene, walk around. I just want to keep going. I don't want to get off the train. I just want to get to where I'm going. So I just overshot. I never even went to like. I don't know how you start the rabbit thing. You didn't go to the rabbit land rescue. But I know okay. about it. I did it back in the day. Um, the same thing. Like I had all these treasures and I didn't know what they were for. And then like halfway through the game or a third way through the game. You finally found out there for like the train parts, and I was like, "Okay, whatever. I'm never coming back. You never have to go back there again." I was like, "I'm never coming back here again." Mm-hmm. Um, there was, I think, Beetle had like a membership mm-hmm. thing. I never had enough money to even <laughs> buy. Like, I could buy either into his membership or like the item that I wanted. So I, was, I never started that. Okay, and some that was annoying to me, but I get. I didn't want to like be harsh on it because it seemed like if you get into this game, there is a lot of fun side stuff. The, yes. I did enjoy, I did some of the take them all on challenge and okay. like, that's cool. I love that in every kind of Zelda game and this was no exception. Yeah. And it's hard. The third one is really hard. Yeah. I didn't get, I didn't go to all the way to the dark link one, but that was just kind of my experience this time. So, and I didn't, I also didn't want to like force myself to do these. Cause then that would have, that like that's that's not I'm I'm rating it based on like my experience playing the game. You yeah. Know? So, it, I feel that the uh, like a- after ha- I I hundred percented this game, so we yeah. had totally different style yeah. of playthroughs, and because I wanted to experience everything, because it was like some of these force gems were frustrating to do, and uh, like the story aspect of them was not satisfying enough. Like oh the Nuki are trying to build a fence, so we need wood. Oh we got wood. Oh, but who's gonna build the fence? Oh, we need the bridge worker. Go get the bridge worker from the trading post. And I'm like, I was literally like, like, you know, whatever. Um, it, it, the story part doesn't make, but it's like you get a force gem, and every time you get a force gem, the rails expand, the spirit tracks expand. Mm-hmm. And what I really like is they would bring up entirely. Well, you probably didn't visit like half the stations in the mm-hmm. game, no. which is fine because the game doesn't require you to. No, yeah, no. But like for the people that take the time to play the whole game, some of these, some of this, there's like the snowdrift station, which it's like a mini dungeon just to solve a puzzle of like which switches to hit. It was okay. It was mm-hmm. it was not bad. There's the slippery station, which is like an ice skating puzzle. Okay. Where, it, where it's like a time, it's like a mini game where you have to get to the end, and there's a beginner, medium, and hard difficulty. I love some of the names of these stations, by the way, as well. There's Slippery Station. There's the Ends of the Earth Station. Oh, well, that's cool. At the top right, that's yeah. all about the sand rod and, mm-hmm. and doing some block puzzles. And then there's the Lost at Sea Station, which is at the the bottom right. Which I was like thinking to myself, in order to do this last Force Gem, the Lost at Sea Station, you have to do multiple force gem quests first to unlock the uh the goron the ore mine mm-hmm. you have to get there you have to do a force gem quest but then you have to carry the the ore to line back but in order to do so it's like one of those things in the sun the ore dissipates it, mm-hmm. it needs to it needs to be in caves when you transport it but you need five units of it by the time you get the line back and you can't just ride there so you have to use one of those force the the gates the warp mm. gates which we with, didn't even talk about in the gameplay. It's it's horrendous. It's it's oh my god! Like there are warps that. Why couldn't there have just been you play this spirit flute and it's like oh where do you want to warp to and then pick yeah. one of these like sort of like a link to the past. Which gate do you want to warp to? I think they wanted to encourage writing on the map. Mm-hmm. I think because that was a big thing in Phantom Hourglass and again just another thing that I think didn't come into play as much here. Like I never found myself jotting things down or right. anything which is a cool feature but I think that's what they wanted to do with this where you draw a line here you know yeah. and a lot of the warp gates are only accessed after doing some of the force gems so you'll see one gate like hmm how do I activate this oh it's the activation is much later in the game after I get a force gem go to the other gate hit the target then I can and it's like you need to get from here to here but the warp gate goes from here to here so it's like instead of going 
you're like zigzagging just to get to the place, like, mm-hmm. and it's awkward. And very rarely are they conveniently placed. I had one workout for me great once. It was <laughs> after the Sand Temple, and they're like, "Oh, great, okay. let's go back to the Tower of Spirits." I have never used this gate before, <laughs> and I was like, "It was such a pain." to get here (laughs) i was so upset because i was gonna have to go back you know this and i was at the end of the game almost so this is when i was like let's just get to this stuff but then i just i happened to see one and i was like oh what's the this i'll go through it and it was much closer and i was (laughs) like wow yeah (laughs) wouldn't this have been great earlier you know um so the the lost at sea station you have to do a force gem quest to get to the dark ore mine (laughs) Then you need to do a force gem chest to get the spirit track so you can activate a warp gate. Mm-hmm. Then you got to carry the ore to Limebeck, which is incredibly hard. I failed it three times before I succeeded. But then Limebeck gives you a, a force gem, which then allows you to go to the Lost at Sea station, which is a total mini dungeon with five floors. It's That's cool. And it's That's all the phantoms cool. and some good puzzles. And like I was thinking to myself, uh, outside of maybe Terrytown, this is the longest side quest in the entire Zelda series. Okay. I think it might be longer than Terrytown, actually. I can see that, yeah. Because it's, it's probably like an hour and a half of gameplay to, yeah. to get to this. <laughs> for, for so, you're, so you're really representing this. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I think the extra stations and the um, take, them on, take them all on challenge mm-hmm. were standouts to me. I can buy that, yeah. I think those are, yeah. But there was a lot stamps we didn't talk about are also stamps stamps yeah. is okay it's just like a little thing you find i don't know what you get from it but yeah you get the uh um the great spin attack which oh, okay. is useful in the take them all on challenge and then if you get all the rabbits you get the beam blade attack Ooh. so those are both nice you get them too late in the quest to really make a difference though mm-hmm. um like the stamps one thing about the stamps that oh my gosh the stamp station the whole thing on the last stamp station is right before you enter the Tower of Spirits Part Six. Okay. So you got to get you have if you have all nineteen of them up until that point, you got to go all the way to the Tower of Spirits. <laughs> okay. And they're like, you go there earlier, but it's a cutscene, so you can't actually do it. Mm-hmm. And the station is not. There. And then you get the stamp, and then you want to le- go all the way down the Tower of Spirits. You got to go through a few rooms, use the warp, travel right. to a Boda village, talk to him, get the spin attack. Dr- and then you have to climb all the way back up the tower. It was like, it's a bit obnoxious. There, that's, I mean, that's just a classic Zelda thing. That yeah. makes you think of, like, you get the gauntlets in Ocarina of Time, and then you have to leave to go get a sculpture in well, Zora's Domain, you know, like. It, it, I, it, I don't even think the gauntlets are a good, oh, well, it would be like you got the ga- gold gauntlets, but then there's a spot inside the Great Deku Tree only accessible like as an adult yeah. on the bottom floor. Mm-hmm. Okay, so go to Ganon's Tower, get the gold gauntlets, go all the way to the Great Deku Tree. Like, yeah. what? Like, why would you well, want it? <laughs> so that goes to what I was, my I think my larger point about the collectibles is just like the, the my willingness to do them. Mm-hmm. Makes me think of something like, you mentioned Breath of the Wild, where it's like, I could get the most minor, like, go get a rock or something, but it's like, I just love traversing in that game. Mm-hmm. So any, just like, go take a picture of this thing for me. I'd be like, great. Yeah. I, I, will, I love going from here to there in Breath of the Wild. Mm-hmm. But I, Not in this one, though. No. I was just like, the- please do not halt my momentum <laughs> through this game. It is killing me. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about the, the music. And I have to say, if you look at the community rankings, virtually everything was between 3 and 3.5. And then the music comes, and they gave it a 4.3. Yeah. Far and away the best, and as did... The staff the st- lines up, too, where it's like everything's kind of like, it's okay, you know, it's good. Everything's within a very narrow margin, and then everybody loved the music. I think that that doesn't surprise me, actually, though. And even, I mean, this is one of my... I gave a lot of th- threes, but I think it was one of the best things about the game, too. Yeah. So, um... The, yeah. the overworld theme on the train is, I guess, the, the best part about the train. <laughs> Just it hearing is. that theme. So initially in the game, too, it feels good because when you get the train up to full speed, it it moves in time with the music. Mm-hmm. Like the ch-ch-ch-ch. And it feels good. 
there are times I feel like they should have made every train song do that because when it doesn't line up, it drives me nuts. <laughs> okay. And it feels bad. <laughs> okay. But I love that song is awesome. I yeah. think it is one of the coolest Zelda songs. I think. Yeah. Uh, and I also some other standouts. I like I like some of the Spirit Flute songs. Not when you're doing them, but after you've successfully done them in the performance, the duets with the various yeah, locomotives. Yeah, those are okay for me. I liked Burns' theme as well. That's what I was going to say, was all of the character-specific themes are really cool in this. I like Angene's theme, yeah, too. Angene's yeah. theme. Uh, Chancellor Cole has a cool yes. theme. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's there's amazing like twists on all these themes throughout the game. Even Zelda's lullaby, there's cool versions of. The songs that play during the story elements were fantastic. Mm-hmm. They're like, yeah. they're intertwining some of these themes. Yeah, one of the coolest like scores of a Zelda game for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're like I loved. I mentioned the Tower of Spirits going up, and they add more to it, and it gets really epic by the end. Mm-hmm. Really cool. Um, for me, on the other side of that, there was a lot of like bland music in the game. Yeah. So <laughs> it was like weird because there was some stuff that I thought was like the best in a Zelda game and then some that was just like I wouldn't say the worst mo- like un- nothing unlistenable or anything but just some of the mo- like it just stuck out as like right. a lot of like town themes and stuff y- like that and dungeon y- themes I don't really like I don't think yeah and there was a lot of uh, repeat tracks too so, okay. especially some of the stations that were like the extra stations all had the same theme Mm-hmm. And uh, a yeah. lot of the repeat tracks were also tracks from Phantom Hourglass as yeah. well, like the cave theme, and you know. So it was um, maybe a little too much of the same stuff. Uh, at least I noticed that. Yeah. But uh, some standouts too. I think an above average soundtrack probably for. Although I did give it a three. Yeah, maybe three was is a bit low thinking about it. But to me, there was just like, I n- I really noticed a lot of those moments where those came in, but. That wasn't most of the game that mm-hmm. happens, and so a lot of times it's it was just kind of like, right. It all kind of was bland to me. Yeah, I I, I ended up giving it a three because uh, this is one of those things where I think generally almost every single Zelda game has a good soundtrack. Yeah, that's true. That's... So, like, I'm not gonna give a five and a four to every game. You know, and I and I I, I, I almost could, but yeah. yeah. Granted, I think I knocked down Oracle Seasons and Twilight Princess up until this point, but. Um, Spirit Tracks is a is a solid soundtrack. Yeah, I th- yeah I think with the the soundtrack and some of the characters and some of the designs of those characters, like you could have had something especially great with this game. But yeah. you know, for me, it didn't it didn't totally get there. Right. So at the end of the day, you and I gave it the same exact score. That is kind of weird, yeah. two point three, and f- for different reasons, you yeah. know, there's stuff you really didn't like. I was kind of mostly when I was looking at a lot of these categories. Actually, I almost did straight twos for a lot okay. of this, which ends up with my final score, mm-hmm. which is my overall opinion of this game is that because two is for me is okay. This is an okay game. Mm-hmm. I had fun playing a lot of it. There was some serious things kind of holding it back for me. But overall, I enjoyed myself. Yeah. I would describe Spirit Tracks as a very imbalanced game and that it has a lot of highs that mm-hmm. are really good, I think, but then a lot of really lows. So it's like peaks and valleys where it's not a consistent game all the way through where I enjoyed all aspects of it. Yeah. There was a lot of things I really didn't like about it and a lot of things I loved about it. And uh, at the end of the day, it's... Um, a 2.3, probably on the lower end of what's going to be my final list, I think. I think so, too. Yeah. I'm th- now that I, when I played it, I was like, this is... <laughs> I mean, I thought it was okay, but I'm just thinking, this is one of the worst Zelda games. Yeah, you know? one of the worst uh, Zelda games. Uh, uh, yeah, It felt like... One of my favorite DS games, though. <laughs> I know we were, we were trying to split some of these up to not compare them, but it did feel like they were trying to correct things from Phantom Hourglass. Well, we'll get to that in yeah eventually. But, but, you know, I think they were successful in some ways and unsuccessful in other ways. And Margus is a very level game where this is peaks and valleys. Sure, okay. We'll yeah. talk about that in like six months. So. But uh, everyone everyone else kind of, staff is kind of with us. The community liked it a little bit more. Well, what, I, what I've what i noticed is uh, I think uh, we're getting a good 
viewing. So right now, the community, everybody, staff, community, you and me, all have Spirit Tracks listed for fourth out of the four games. Yeah. So obviously, the average is also at four. But we're, we're starting to learn some stuff now that we have more games. With the community ranking Spirit Tracks at 3.4, and Twilight Princess at 4.2, I think this is more or less going to be the range for the entire list of Zelda games. Okay. You're not, so they're, we're not going to have a one, you think? No, there is no <laughs> chance, I don't think. So, um, uh, yeah, so it's it's not so much what the score is, but it's how it ranks, I think, is it's, what's going to be more sure. important at the end of the day. Uh, so right now, you and I still have the exact same ranking. We do. And so one thing I just thought of real quick was that I think we put Spirit Tracks above Twilight Princess when we ranked it before based on our feelings. Yeah. Which kind of makes sense because you have it very close in your score. Yeah. So, it, you know, and, and our, our score is... There's some arbitrariness, too. So 2.3 <laughs> yeah, yeah. to 2.4 is literally any category I would go one more <laughs> or any category in Twilight Princess I went one less yeah, yeah. and they're the same. This isn't like perfect science or anything, what, but I think it's kind of interesting. If you ask me to rank these 10, the Spirit Tracks about these 10 categories six months from now without looking at this, <laughs> there will probably be three or four <laughs> that are off by one Total. or two. Totally. With, with that, you know, we're going from our gut, and this isn't like the numbers aren't science here. I just thought that was interesting. Like, yeah. That kind of shows comparably how you feel about these games. Yeah. Kind of a mixed bag, right? Right. Yeah. So, but we line up here. Our our numbers. I seem to be maybe more positive about most things. We'll see as more games come. I think we're going to start mm -hmm. uh, realizing what kind of human beings you and I are. <laughs> as we oh, start right I'm sure once we get... Yeah, we'll talk about uh, certain games. But what we can announce now is for the month of May, we will be covering The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Yes. HD? Or, yeah. yeah. HD, play yeah. Whatever, play, whatever version whatever you Whatever version know. you want to play. <laughs> so what, uh, just like with all the previous surveys, we have a poll... In the description below so go ahead and fill out your rankings to contribute to the community's listing and uh, just like all the previous ones these are up for interpretation these numbers so take them with a grain of salt but uh, voice your opinion so we want we want uh, you know the more the merrier in terms of the the, the polling this should be a big one I think so. Wind Waker yeah oh, yeah I, I'm, I'm I don't know where it's gonna fit you know so I have no idea. I I hope to, I hope it'll at least split up some of our lists a little bit more. Uh, I think it will. Although yeah. you know what, I think there's a good chance yours and I's are still the same after episode <laughs> I think four. So actually, yeah. But we will see. We don't know. Um, <laughs> so thanks for watching, guys, and uh, we'll see you guys next month for the Legend of Zelda: The Wind Waker. I don't know why I'm nervous for, for the beginning. <laughs> oh, wait till they hear our spirit <laughs> track thoughts. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see. If I screw up, I screw up. Hey, guys. Welcome back. This time. <laughs> welcome back to the different... <laughs>